have very conflicting feelings about this neighborhood in San Sequoia because I love this lot. I think that this lot might be one of my favorite lots in the entire game. I really like how it's right up against the water like this. It's got some concrete on two sides, so it's a good area for community lots. The views of the water are amazing. I like how there's some cool walkways kind of nearby. This is just a really prime location for building restaurants and stuff like that. The only problem is that this neighborhood is so big, it feels almost impossible to play in. I think this has been a problem in a lot of the more recent packs and the more recent worlds where they're making these big, vast, spread out areas, and that seems like a good thing because we have more places to walk around, but there's a lot of places to walk around and nothing to actually do when you're walking around them. And there's also no Sims here. This is supposed to be a subway station, so Sims spawn here in this area, and that seems really cool in theory, except it's like three Sims spawning there. <laughs> and I just, I wish that it was more of like a bustling, busy area of town and not like a vast spread out, maybe you see one or two other Sims kind of area of town. If it were all in a tighter square, it would be smaller, which isn't as good, but at least it seems more lively. So I don't know. I just, I feel weird about this part of town, but I still adore this lot. And I've pretty much only built community lots here so far. I've not tried to build a real house or anything on this lot yet. The last time I built here, I made a giant set of townhouses with three different stores on the bottom floor. And that was really fun, but also a ginormous undertaking and not really functional because you can't use community lots and residential lots at the same time. So I was thinking that today we should try and do something different and maybe something a little bit more useful and try to build an actual house for your Sims to live in. But, and kind of keeping with this community lot theme, I was thinking that we could build something that's been converted from a community lot into a home. So here's the vision. I'm thinking it's some sort of old factory that's been purchased, renovated, and converted into a single family home. I was trying to think of like a funny backstory for this and I came up with converted cupcake factory. You know that giant cupcake machine? This place made those cupcake machines. It's a cupcake factory, cupcake factory. <laughs> so that's kind of the story I was trying to tell. It's obviously no longer a cupcake machine factory. It's just a house, a family lives here. Don't worry, it's not like apartments or townhouses or anything. It's it's literally just a house. It's a regular single family residential lot in The Sims 4. It actually looks a lot bigger than it really is. It's only a 30 by 20 lot. It seems like it's some sort of ginormous building, but there's a lot of open space in here too, because I've got the second floor kind of lofted. So in total, it becomes a three bedroom, two bathroom house and it's got a really cool art studio on the roof. I was kind of picturing that an artist lived here, so I thought maybe they bought it, they moved in, they renovated it all by themselves, and then built themselves like a really nice fancy studio to go along with it. And then I wasn't super sure about what the other bedroom should be. There was some talk about roommates and like some ideas like that, but I kind of tried to decorate the other two bedrooms as belonging to teenagers. I thought maybe it's like a single parent and they're like older kids that are maybe like 17, 18 years old. I'm probably overthinking this because it's just a game. <laughs> And these are like pretend Sims. I didn't make any Sims. I just had like a vision in my head of who might live here. But if you wanted to play in this house, you could just, you know, update the bedrooms a tiny bit. They'd kind of work for anybody. Adults could live in those rooms very easily. They're not like full of toys. One of them is kind of sports themed and then the other one is like kind of, I don't know, pink themed. <laughs> That's kind of a weird way of describing it, but. And you know what? Speaking of sports, <laughs> I, I didn't intend to post this video on Super Bowl Sunday when I built it, but it is in fact Super Bowl Sunday. So I have accidentally made a sports themed room for the sports themed day. And that is all I will say on the matter. Don't worry, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about football to you. You can kind of see the shape coming together a little bit more on the rest of the factory. And what you're gonna notice is that I spent so long trying to figure out the roof of this building. I was trying out a ton of different options. I was looking at things like maybe doing some sort of gabled roof. I was trying flat roofs. I was trying platforms. I, I literally tried a million things. I did not know how I wanted to do the roof. I think in the end it, it kind of worked out, but it was definitely a trust the process sort of moment because it took me a long time to get to a point where I thought it made sense. One of my favorite parts is the really cool fire escape that goes up to the roof. So there's kind of like a set of metal stairs and then also a ladder so you can access the roof from the bottom floor or from inside the bedroom. I put like a door from the primary bedroom onto the fire escape so it's kind of like a 
balcony, but it's also access to the rooftop art studio, which you can see coming along right now. That weird small building on the roof becomes the art studio. And I ended up making that completely glass. It's all glass walls and a glass roof on top of this weird little like glass box greenhouse looking thing. It would probably be kind of hot in there, which would in turn be a little bit unpleasant, but also it's a solid glass room with like 360 degree views of this. And I don't think anybody's gonna complain about that. They've got AC, they're fine, okay? <laughs> They'll get over it. It's also, again, The Sims, so nobody actually cares about that. <laughs> glass roofs don't make the place hotter. It doesn't make a difference. Now, as far as windows go, I used the Mosquito Stuff Pack windows. It's actually called Mosquito, Machino, I don't really know or care. It's like a high-end fashion brand. I call it Mosquito uh, on purpose. <laughs> if you've ever heard me say that, it's intentional. Mosquito like the bug, I think is better. The Mosquito Pack, she's controversial, but you gotta admit the windows are kind of cool. They are actually kind of good. So they worked really well for this purpose. I really wanted to use stuff from the industrial loft kit in here because I was kind of inspired by that kit just generally for the whole build. The problem is the industrial loft kit only has one window and one archway. And so it's not really that good for doing a full building like this because not much matches it and doesn't really have the greatest texture either because it's very metal and like almost a little bit rusty looking. So when you try and match that to a different black swatch on something else, nothing else has that rusty color to it. So it just doesn't really work. There's not enough variety. So I had a hard time using those. I did use the mosquito windows and then the arched ones are actually base game. There's drama about this. So listen to this, okay? When the industrial loft kit came out, they teased it with this like cover photo of a window. The picture had an arched window and like some furniture in it. That arched window was this one that I'm using here that kind of matches the mosquito stuff items. Then the pack comes out and the arched window that's in the pack is not the arched window from the teaser photos. It is not the same thing. It's different. It's still an arched window. It's still big, but it's got different textures. It's got different like paneling in the middle. It's a completely different window. And so everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute. Now, hold on. <laughs> That's not what you advertised and you've given me the wrong window in the pack. So then the Sims team had to be like, oopsies, we're so sorry, everybody. Don't worry. And then they went and made this arched window and added it to the base game for everybody as like an apology for the false advertising. I don't think they intended to false advertise the, the item. I think there must have been like some sort of oversight or something. I don't really know what happened. Like there, maybe they tried to make this window and then changed it last minute to a different one and it wasn't communicated to the, the team that made the cover. I have no clue how this could have happened. I don't get it. I'm not trying to justify it, but I don't think they like tried to intentionally lie to us. I think it was an accident. I just don't understand how they had an accident like this. But anyway, that base game arched window stems from drama. It's always fun for me to like go back and talk about the Sims drama of years past because I know a lot of you are maybe sort of new to the Sims community. Maybe you didn't watch a lot of Sims content back then. Maybe you didn't follow the kits because who cares about kits? <laughs> so you might not have known about that, but I find it all very exciting. Now, speaking of things that some of you might find very exciting, I have have big news. <laughs> so I've been talking a little bit about this, but me and Dan are planning a wedding right now. Yes, technically we are already married. Not, we, we literally are already married. We got married like two years ago, <laughs> but because of the whole visa process and COVID, we didn't have like a wedding wedding, okay? We want to have a wedding wedding. So we're planning that now. We've like booked a venue, we've booked a date, all, all this stuff. It's not until next year, so don't get too excited. But I'm going wedding dress shopping this weekend. I guess by the time that you see this video, I will have already been wedding dress shopping. I don't know. I don't really know what to expect. I, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy a dress this weekend. I just am looking, I guess, but I am really scared of it. <laughs> I know some people get excited about this kind of thing. It's not exciting to me. It's really nerve wracking and like stressful. And I think I'm going to be like sad and feel ugly when I try them on. I know that sounds so bad, but I just, I'm really scared of it. Um, hopefully it goes well though. I don't know if I'll like show you anything. I've seen people on TikTok make videos that are like, oh, these are the ones that I didn't buy. But it like depends how I'm going to feel in the dresses that I don't buy, so I I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I if I show anything to you this weekend, and I'll let you know if I end up buying one. I, I think it might be like a, a few attempts this process of trying to find one, but we'll see. I know the kind of things that I like, but it's hard to know until you've actually tried it on, you know, if you actually are gonna like it when you're wearing it. I just get quite self-conscious when I'm shopping for clothes, and I feel like going to a place like this with this big outing and stuff is gonna be even worse. So I'm, I'm feeling quite nervous and not really excited about 
about the dress shopping in particular. But again, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> That's my wedding planning update for the week. I also ordered all of our save the dates, which I won't show you either because I think that linking the day of the event is probably a bad idea. I'll probably keep that a secret until next year <laughs> when it happens. But I bought all the save the dates because it is next year, but I want to send them out soon because a lot of our family is coming from like far away. Like Dan's family lives in England, so it's kind of a, a huge deal <laughs> to come to Florida for a wedding. So I want to give ample time for that. So we, we're going to try and send them out soon. Wow, I suck right now. I'm like, here's these two big updates, but no, I won't be showing them to you. <laughs> That's terrible. I will eventually. I just don't think it's a good idea to show it right now. You know, I probably shouldn't like talk about it or share it too much yet. We did do an engagement photo shoot, which again is so silly because we've been married for two years, but we never took like actual engagement photos with a photographer. We didn't take any wedding photos with a photographer when we actually had the ceremony like at the courthouse. So we didn't have any like real photos by a photographer. We had like phone photos by my sister, which are still nice, but I, I wanted to have like photo photos. Plus like for the save the dates and stuff, people put photos on them. So we took some photos this week. That's a lie. It was like three weeks ago. I posted them on Instagram this week. <laughs> so if you want to see a couple of them, I did post them on Instagram. My name is just Lil Simsy on Instagram. I'm trying to be brave and like post more on Instagram, but I don't get out much. So I don't take that many photos, which is bad because I'm supposed to be like an internet person, but I'm not good at photo posting. That's just not me. I'm, I'll post every day on YouTube every day. And that's like not a big deal to me. <laughs> but when it comes to posting like one picture on Instagram, it's it's really nerve wracking and I don't know why. Cause I would argue that posting on YouTube to like a way bigger following and a, a video is a way bigger deal. But this just seems normal to me. I'm used to this. I'm not, I'm not used to the Instagram posts. <laughs> But back to the build for a second, we're working on the floor plan right now. So you can kind of see how I'm trying to lay everything out. There's basically a huge lofted space in the middle and that's gonna be like a two story living room in here. And then by this weird arched window, which actually looks really good, I think, I'm gonna have the kitchen and dining room in that area. I wanna have the dining table like laid out right in front of that giant arched window and the kitchen right in the front entryway. And then we've got space for two bedrooms and a shared bathroom downstairs, like a Jack and Jill bathroom. Upstairs there's one bedroom and an ensuite bathroom for the primary bedroom. And then on the third floor is the art studio. The biggest issue with this floor plan is that I don't have a like hall bathroom for guests to access. All of the bathroom doors are through bedrooms and that's my own fault. I could have had a bathroom door like outside of it, but I have this weird thing about putting bathroom doors in like one tile wide corners. I like to have any door be centered between two tiles or at least like not only in a one tile space because I hate how it kind of like clips off the corner of the door that way. So even though there was one tile for me to put a bathroom in the hallway, I had the only doors through the bedroom, <laughs> which is not very smart. It's not very logical. In real life, that would be super annoying if you had to have your guests like go into your bedroom to get to the only bathroom. And that does happen, like it's not uncommon in real life, but it's just not ideal. And considering this house, at least in our story, was like completely renovated from scratch. It was like a big empty shell of a factory and we built the whole thing. It makes no sense that they wouldn't have a proper like hall bathroom added in because they're building the whole thing themselves, but it's too late. <laughs> I already made the call. I decided it was better this way. And so here we are. Now, this house took me so long to make. And we also had a couple of problems during. I've been having some weird PC issues recently. It's not always, but twice last week and once this week, my entire PC has just died. One of the times I was just sat here making the PowerPoint, the Google slides that I used for that daycare pack video I made. I wasn't even like doing anything intensive. I wasn't recording, wasn't streaming, didn't have any games open. I was just in Google slides. And the other two times I was streaming and it was this day <laughs> at this point of the video. So what you're seeing right now is my game crashed because my whole PC died and I had to redo a lot of the kitchen and I was so mad about it that I like refused to record it a second time. So you might have just seen like a lot of it skip ahead furniture wise and you're like not seeing all of the furnishings being added in. Yeah, <laughs> that's because I was in a bad mood and I when I redid it for the second time I didn't want to record it twice and then like the footage got lost because the PC dying. It just, ah, uh, I'm so sorry. It's very frustrating to me as well. I will show you a tour 
of the full living room, kitchen, dining area in detail. So you can see everything because it kind of cut off some of the decor. The vibes that I was going for, and this is gonna sound kind of weird, but I was entirely inspired by the blue base game chairs that I use as the dining table chairs. I wanted the place to be very dark with a lot of like black and brick accents. So we have like the black tile floor, we have the black windows and the black doors, but I also wanted to have some really vibrant pops of color because the Sim who lives here is an artist. So I was trying to focus on where I could find those colors and like where I could add them in. One of the other things that was just so beyond frustrating while I was working on this is I was having some sort of weird platform bug. I'll show you better and like up close in the tour at the end of the video, but there was this weird visual glitch where when I was on the second floor, like in the loft area looking down, half the time everything would disappear. It was just visual, it wasn't like actually gone or deleting, but it was looking so weird and it was making me so mad because I tried so hard to make this place look cool and I had this vision of a loft and then it just wasn't working right. And this doesn't always happen. I don't know if it's because of the platforms. I think it might be because the whole house is technically on like a four high platform. If I had used a foundation instead of a platform, this wouldn't be happening, but it's too late. <laughs> It's fine. Platforms and The Sims, it's such a shame because they're so cool. Like what you can do with platforms with the split leveling and I like how I'm able to use them to raise the house up on a foundation but not have to use the foundation trims because none of the foundations match this brick. That was the main problem is I wanted to have brick on the whole exterior but no foundations were this color brick. Nothing matches the metal on like the kitchen side either so I, I didn't want a foundation. So I used the platforms and it's so fun, it looks so good but then like there's all these these visual glitches on the interior. Nothing game breaking, it just looks kind of annoying. Like realistically, it's not a huge deal that you can't see the first floor from the second floor because like whatever, you're on the second floor anyway. But it looks so cool when you can and you just, you can't. So I was, again, I was quite sad. We did actually add a couple other kind of exciting details. I used a lot of that industrial loft kit for like pipes and duct work and things like that to add in to try and fit that factory vibe. Those ducts from the industrial loft kit, they're really cool. They do cause some problems at times. They're not causing any issues here in this house. When you use them on short wall height, I think your sims get confused and can't walk under them. So just bear that in mind. This is a medium wall height, so we're fine there. But they're also just visually quite uh, distracting <laughs> because there's like a huge pipe just blocking the view. So I tried to focus them in areas that weren't that big of a deal, like in the hallway and maybe like above a bed because the bed is big so you're not really distracted too much by it. And when your sims are in the bed, you don't need to watch them that closely because they're just sleeping or like woohooing. But still, <laughs> since I was a child, when my sims woohoo in beds, sometimes I like turn the camera away. I don't know why because I don't really feel weird about it now as an adult. It's just like a habit. <laughs> when I was a kid. Cause you know when you're young and you're like, you know what if your parents walk into the room? So you're like, turn the camera so they can't see that, you know? I still have that habit in my mind a lot of the time. <laughs> Even though there's no need, there's no need. I'm 24 years old, like we're all adults here and yet I still do it. Not always. Other times I think that we end up watching like a little bit too intently. I just made a whole video where I ranked every single woohoo spot in The Sims 4. It took me like ages to record and it's like 45 minutes long or something. But if you wanna watch that, um, that's the opposite of looking away. We stared at every single one of those woohoo types. Every single one. I'll put it on the end card at the end of the video for you. But anyway, <laughs> back to the build for a second. Upstairs in this hallway, we have kind of like a small lofted hallway space and then access to the bedroom from up here. I thought about having the bedroom just be open, like one big open area completely aloft. Then I figured like realistically for privacy purposes, because quite a few sims live here, they probably would prefer to have a separate bedroom instead of just an open area. So I built walls in and then in front of the walls in the small lofted area there's like a small corner I put a desk nook over there so we've got a computer it's a very expensive computer which you probably don't want but <laughs> it's there and there's also a staircase up to the third floor so you can access the inside of the third floor on the rooftop the like interior art studio from the inside of the house but you can also access the rooftop like general rooftop outdoor area from the fire escape. I'll kind of explain more why once we're up there because you'll see it once we get there. It has to do with platforms. 
the access is weird because of the different wall heights. But right now we are decorating the primary bedroom and I really, really loved the color scheme in here. I used that kind of like sunsetty themed rug from the horse ranch pack and I used that as the main color inspiration. And then I paired it with a movie hangout painting and like some dark blue wallpaper everywhere. We've got like a cute orange bed and like some other little purple details. And I really liked how this worked together. I've never really used those colors together anywhere. I even found like a clothing rack that had the exact right color scheme. So I used that in there too. I don't ever use the clothing rack item either, but I used it in two places in this house. Cause I felt like the metal was kind of a nice touch and the clothes were really pretty and colorful. So they kind of worked nicely too. And then for the bed, I tried to make almost like a custom headboard. And so I put cabinets back there and then scooted the bed into them a little bit. So it's kind of like a double wide headboard, but it's nice for storage. <laughs> Again, it's the Sims, there is no storage, but you can pretend. And then it's also like a nice wide table nightstand. So you can kind of customize the stuff that's going on it and really decorate in there. And then I also use a sort of weird, maybe concrete wall in most places. I built this live on my Twitch stream and that concrete wall was kind of a controversial idea. I really liked it because it felt like it fit this kind of industrial vibe. A lot of other people thought the build looked unfinished and like I didn't paint the walls because there's like the base game concrete wall that's like the default wallpaper. And then there's this one from the Desert Lux kit and the one that I use is from the kit. So it's different. It's like a fancy concrete wall, except it, it does look a little bit like the default base game one. This one's nicer, but I can see see why you would think the walls look unpainted in a couple areas, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> so if you hate it, I'm sorry. And now we have finally, finally moved up to the third floor to work on the art studio. And this is like my favorite part of the whole house. I think the windows all the way around it are so cool. And then up here, I tried to put access to just pretty much every craft that we have. We've got an easel, we've got a bunch of canvases, there's stuff for knitting up here in case you want to do that. And I tried to put a lot of like crafty decor too. So like a lot of the nifty knitting clutter, they have like cute cabinets with a bunch of like craft supplies. There's paint stuff on a rack on the wall, all those kind of things I was putting in here. I ended up deleting windows on one of the walls on this top floor just to have space for that like cute little paint rack. And then because we had the space and because my chat kept saying it's gonna be so hot in there, it's all glass. I was like, fine, <laughs> I'll add an AC unit. So I put an air conditioning unit up there too, which I think kind of fits the vibes though. Like I think it kind of works for this industrial thing that we're going for. And it's just fun to have. Those AC units and the radiators from the rent pack actually both work by the way. If you've got seasons, you can turn them on to like sync with the thermostat and then the AC unit will turn on when it's hot outside. It's just visual, it doesn't actually do anything. The thermostat is what does things with seasons, but it is kind of fun to have the detail of the like fans spinning when it's hot outside. I don't know. I kind of like it. We are moving back downstairs now to finally work on the other two bedrooms. And there was a lot of like back and forth for me, at least with these two bedrooms. Cause I, again, I was talking a lot about like, should it be for roommates that are adults? Should it be for kids? Should it be for like our teenage children? Cause however I did it, it really changed the vibes of what I was going to furnish them with. But I settled on teens and then went for like some kind of teenage like decor with posters and stuff in each of these rooms, but it just took me a second to get there. <laughs> and I also really wanted to have it not be blue and to try and use some swatches that I don't normally go for. I was really digging around looking at different rugs that I could try. And I knew that we had to use the industrial loft kit bed. Like you cannot build a whole house inspired by a factory and not use the industrial loft kit furniture. So <laughs> I used the yellow version of it. And this one was tough for me because I wanted it to be a teens room, but it was looking kind of like a guest room for a while. So it took me a bit of time to find like the, the creative cute that it needed. Right now with this base game rug, it's not working, but I ended up going back in instead and using a rug from Get Famous that has some like blue and yellow like triangles on it. And that kind of worked out quite nicely. I also put the duct work in here. And again, it's a little distracting on the ceiling, but it looks good still. So it's worth it. This room in particular is probably the greatest failure of the build, at least right now. Cause I, I knew I wanted to have some vibrant colors. I was trying like the pop art stuff. I it just, nothing was working. So again, trust the process. I swear we'll come back and fix it. It just took me some time to get there. Oh, that reminds me. One of the other things that people in my Twitch chat kind of didn't love were the doors that I was using. These are just base game doors. I picked them for a couple reasons. Number one, they're really tall. They're taller than like the average base game door height because they have like a transom window at the top. And so they fit a bit better on the taller walls in this house. And I kind of just liked the texture and the gold doorknobs on them. So I wanted to use them in here. And I also felt like the transom wasn't even that weird. It's not that 
not common these days, I don't think, to build new places with the transom windows, but a lot of old places have a lot of transom windows in their doors. So maybe we can just pretend that those are like original doors from the factory and they like took them out carefully, restored them, and then reinstalled them for all of the new bedrooms. I kind of like the vibes of that. <laughs> I know it's just pretend, like it doesn't actually mean anything, but I always kind of have fun pretending with that sort of thing and like pretending that it's real. One thing that I thought helped a lot in this bedroom was when I went in and added some extra windows behind the bed. And shockingly, I used the greenhouse kit windows for this. So we have a mix of three different kinds of windows in this house. We got the mosquito stuff ones, the base game arches, and then the greenhouse kit windows and the door that I used for the balcony. And I thought it was perfect. The greenhouse kit ones almost match identically. Even when they're open, it kind of has a similar vibe to it. So that worked quite well. It was helpful to have another size variation. I always complain about this with builds, but half the problem with using a lot of these new packs for builds is there's just not enough windows. We only get like a couple new windows, like with the industrial loft kit. And so it's so hard to do an entire build because you need different sizes on different places. So having the access to those, the kit ones were pretty helpful. The greenhouse kit has really come in clutch a lot of times. Those windows are really, really nice. I, I didn't really think that the greenhouse kit would become my most used kit because I knew that I liked it. I thought it was fun, but I didn't realize just how often I would use those greenhouse windows. I think as far as kits go, pastel pop, book nook, greenhouse kit, and maybe like the everyday clutter kits are probably my favorite ones. The bathroom clutter kit has a toilet paper holder that's really nice, but that's a silly reason to like a pack. <laughs> you can't go around saying your favorite kit is because it has a toilet paper holder in it. That's just, that's ridiculous, Kayla. So I like the other ones though, a lot. They're pretty good. If you're gonna buy a kit, I, I would recommend any of those. It's hard with the kits because it's so personal. Like what I prefer in kits might be the exact opposite of what you would want and that's totally fine Like all of the kits, they're all decent like size-wise compared to each other And so it's it, whatever you think is best is what's best for you I don't think any of the kits are objectively worse than the other ones if that makes sense But anyway, we're doing the teenagers bedroom downstairs. That's like a little bit more vibrant in color scheme I based this whole thing around the rug from jungle adventure It's rare that I use this rug because it is really really busy, which is fun, especially for a place like this. I just don't use it that often in my regular builds. So I was excited to have a place to use it in here. We also put in like some pride flags and some pretty decor. Right now I'm trying to figure out the desk and it looks a mess, but <laughs> placing things and placing objects requires sometimes filling in all the slots and then going back and adding to it. So just ignore that, okay? I did also put one of the clothing racks down here because it kind of matched the whole space. And then I wanted to put a hamper and then I realized no, no hampers. If you put a hamper, they're gonna have to do laundry. And that is, that is bad. <laughs> we do not want laundry in this house. So I did not put a hamper in here. At this point, I had already done the bathrooms. So I didn't wanna go back and add in laundry like after the fact. And I know myself, I never ever have my Sims do laundry. I hate doing laundry. In real life, you guys, I've got laundry sitting in the dryer right now from yesterday afternoon. I need to, I need to put it away today. I will, I'll be brave. <laughs> but I'm just, I don't, laundry does not excite me in the slightest. So I try to avoid it in my Sims houses. But that's most of this room done. I'm just going in and adding some last minute details, things like glowing mirrors and fairy lights. We've got, you know, a dresser and some various things like that. But after I had finished this bedroom and like found the vibes that I was going for in here, it made it a lot easier to go back to the other bedroom and like update it and add some clutter and like kind of fit it together a bit more. I just had to find that spark of inspiration. <laughs> and the spark was unfortunately sports. So I used like the yoga mat, the sports floor clutter. There's like a basketball and a hat on the wall from the clutter kit, which reminds me this build million packs. Oh my god, this is one of the worst ones so far as far as pack content goes. <laughs> this is not a limited pack build. I promise I'll do another one this week. I'll make you like a, a base game in one pack sort of build this week to make up for it. But this one, oh, she has all the packs. I would bet all, at least almost all of them. <laughs> They're everywhere. But anyway, moving on now to the last part of the build, some of the exterior spaces. Possibly the most exciting part of this build is the rooftop. So we've got this access from the fire escape and I wanted to put a couple cute like cozy things up here for your sims to use. I found some kind of cool vines. I got some lounge chairs. I thought about adding a hot tub, but I just, I felt like it didn't fit up there because there's like not a wall on the roof and there's all these ducks up here and stuff. So it didn't really work that nicely with the hot tub, but I did end up putting some lounge chairs and some plants. I got some fairy lights up here. I think I put a game table as well. I love those game tables, especially now that we have puzzles. The puzzles are so fun because your sims can use them to like actually play games. Oh, never mind, no game table. I told a lie. <laughs> 
Okay, I thought about it, but I did end up deleting it. That's my bad. I didn't know how much to put up here. I was worried about doing it too much, so I was trying to be careful, but if you play here, you could totally add more. There is also downstairs on the back patio, there's like a grill and a bar and some seating and stuff. So we've got all the bases covered pretty much. And that, my friends, is the full renovated factory build. I wanna pop back into the real game for a second to give you a tour of the finished product. So just to remind you, we're on this Manzanita Terrace lot in San Sequoia. And on the gallery, it's called the Converted Cupcake Factory. It costs like 145,000 simoleons. And as I warned you, uses so many packs. This is so bad. I promise I'll, I'll get you a limited pack build. I swear, I'll make a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll place it real quick so we can look around. I had a lot of fun doing the outside. I went through and added some things like this mural on the floor. Your sims can actually paint this so they can make a mural there. They can also paint a mural over here on the side of the wall. Uh, back on this side, I kind of put like a little half wall and some trash cans here before the fire escape. Some people in my chat wanted me to add a dumpster, but I felt like because it's a, a residential building and like a private family home, they probably wouldn't have a dumpster. It would be like just regular trash cans. Uh, when you come around the back side, there's just some plain landscaping and some lights. I do have things like the fire alarm system. I love this bar and grill area. We've got the bar, we've got a pizza oven, all this stuff right here. You can sit here and eat. I put an extra easel downstairs by the water so your sim can like stand out here and paint. Uh, and around the side, this, this garage door is also a mural. So your sims can paint on this too. So generally quite a few options for painting skill building over here. Uh, this is the kind of finished product on the exterior. I'll get upstairs last, but we'll kind of start right here through the front door. So when you first walk in, we've got, as you can see, a very cool skylight in this area, but you walk right in through a small entryway with just like a table. There's some cat statues. We've got like our keys in the mail up there. I did put a full length mirror so you can look at how you look before you go out. And then this is the kitchen. I thought that the kitchen looked so good. I loved the dark wall accent with the cool shelves and all the clutter. I think the wood colors look kind of nice too. This is just a base game cabinet, but it does have some cool kitchen stuff appliances. These are from the industrial loft kit. <laughs> and then over here, this is the dining room. This is what I was most excited about because I loved the table being centered with these windows. We've got this really cool dining table. I've got some art canvases just leaned against the wall to bring in the color scheme. And I tried to find a sort of neutral rug that also tied in the colors. And I loved this because it had that like darkish blue color, a light blue. It has that kind of like reddish brown orangey color that matches the brick. So I thought it worked pretty well. And then you come this way and this takes you into the living room. So I've got a bunch more canvas type stuff. We've got all kinds of like pipes on the wall and things like that. I thought about doing built-ins all here underneath these windows, but it didn't really fit. So I settled for this record player, but we do have a really nice huge TV in front of the staircase. Don't worry, you've got pet bowls so you can feed the cats. And then through this door on the right, we've got that first teenager's bedroom. They've got like a very pink and blue and orange color scheme going on in here. So I've got all kinds of decor to fit that. I think I like this room the best. In between their rooms, they've got a small Jack and Jill bathroom. This is what I was talking about. I didn't want to put the bathroom door like right there. So I just didn't. <laughs> and I put it in between their rooms instead. But it's nice, it's functional, it's got some cute colors going on in it. And then this is that other teen's room with the kind of like sports theme. They've got a very yellow and blue color scheme going on. When you come back out this way, you can go up the stairs right here. And this is what I mean with the weird glitch. Do you see this? Like how I move the camera and the stuff just like comes and goes. This is so annoying. I When I tell you I almost cried about this, I actually almost cried about this. I was so frustrated. <laughs> like, look at that. Isn't that so weird? But I think it's because of the platforms. Ignore it. <laughs> Up here, we've got a small desk nook. We've got this kind of cool plant area and like some pipes. Uh, you can come into the primary bedroom this way and they have an actual balcony in the front. And they've also got a door to the fire escape through their bedroom. They've got like some wardrobe doors right here, a dresser, we've got a clothing rack. I just think the colors in here look so good. And they have their own primary ensuite bathroom. This has a huge tub. It's got like a double sink. I made a custom shower right here as well. I put like windows to make a walk-in shower like this. And then you can come back out here up these stairs to the third floor where I have the art studio. The lighting in here I just think looks so cool because of all the windows but they've got kind of like a painting corner over here. They've got a desk so they can draw or, or whatever. I mean you can't draw in The Sims 4 but you can pretend. <laughs> it looks like an artist is using this. They've got storage for their supplies over this way. We've got stuff to knit. There's places to sit. I mean you've got all the things in here and it's completely made out of glass. It's got like the glass roof, the glass windows. If you want to access the actual rooftop there's not a door here because this is actually 
technically sunken, if you can tell. So there couldn't be a door, it wouldn't really fit, but you can get up the fire escape to use these lounge chairs. I put a telescope, there's some planter boxes, and a yoga mat. I feel like that was kind of nice because the yoga mat's not too intrusive from the outside, but it's still useful for your sims. There's basically two death traps up here. You've got this so you can get struck by meteors, and you also have this because I don't know about you, but my sims non-stop try to autonomously do yoga, even in the winter. So they'll like walk up here and then take their clothes off, put on their athletic wear, and start doing yoga in a snowstorm. So I have had sims come dangerously close to freezing to death because of this thing, but I usually catch it in time, but that is there for you. And then if you come back downstairs through this living room door, you can access the back patio, and that is the fully finished product. We've got everything going on over here. I quite liked this build. I'm kind of excited about the idea of playing with an artist here. I think it's kind of a cool shape. I think it would also make a kind of cool community lot if you switch this into like, I don't know, this could be a cool karaoke bar, a cool cafe. It might be a really cool art center instead. I really am proud of the exterior of this. It's not really my personal style, but I think it came together quite nicely. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you liked this video, I do build stuff all the time here on my YouTube channel. And I also stream Sims building like pretty much every day on Twitch. So if you want to see the slow, long-term, multi-day process of actually building this live, you can watch my Twitch streams and make sure you're subscribed here to not miss my next video. Thank you for watching and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye everybody. Oh my goodness, I keep making these ridiculously long speed build videos. <laughs> Hopefully you like them. This is like the sixth one in a row.